19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way, for your faith has made you well. All right. Lucky, lucky for you guys, I planned a short sermon today. But that's relative, right? Okay. Two young girls did an experiment with two different communities, very different communities. One was an inner city urban girl. The other one was a suburban girl. They switched homes for one week. So the inner city girl went into this wonderful suburb with a home. There were just the kitchen and the family room where everyone gathers to watch TV was bigger than her apartment that she lived in with her family. The other girl went into the city where she found a lot of friendly people, happy people, but in a very cramped space. The young woman in the suburbs, she found that everything was lovely and beautiful and spacious, and they received her so graciously she had everything that she needed when she went to the school to, to ex in the exchange that her friend went to. Uh, the school was welcoming and they went to church. And she found that the church was spacious and beautiful. The music was perfect and everyone was kind and welcoming. But it seemed to lack something that she was normally used to. The suburban girl went into the inner city. And there was no time when she was not safe, but everybody she noticed kind of stayed indoors and they went anywhere, they went in groups. But it was a place that had high crime. It's a place where you could see drug dealers on the corner selling drugs. There's a place where you could see women prostituting themselves, soliciting johns. And even though at no time was she under any kind of threat whatsoever, she noticed that in this house there was always some level of stress. And then she went to the, urban, uh, to, the, yeah, to the urban church, inner city church. And when she got there, she experienced something that she had never seen before. My goodness, there was dancing, there was singing, there was praising. People were so excited and so, uh, so happy, and it went on for hours. I thought I would just throw that in because we're running a little late. <laughs> and when interviewing the two girls after it was all over, they talked about what they had experienced. And when it came to the issue of church, the young woman from the inner city said the church was fine, it was beautiful, but it seemed to be lacking something that she normally experienced. And the girl from the suburbs who went to the inner city, she said when she experienced this incredible joy in Thanksgiving, she asked the people there, why are you all so excited? And their response was, we survived another week. You see, we survived another week. It, I guess gratitude sometimes depends on where you are in life. Am I right? So we have a story about gratitude, don't we? Jesus is traveling with his disciples. Some men who are lepers recognize him and ask for mercy and for healing. There are ten of them. It says that they kept their distance. This is something that they had to do because their disease was highly contagious. But not only that, they were unclean. And in the tradition of that time in the first century, if you're unclean and you touch somebody else, you make them unclean. And that's just not a matter of going home and washing your hands or pouring water over your head and taking a bath. When you are unclean, you have to show yourself to the priest and go through a ritual to make you clean again so that you can go back out in the public. 
You see how crazy it all gets? So, not only are they experiencing a horrible disease, but they're also socially outcast. They're not allowed to participate in the whole community. They're separated from their families, their friends, their villages. All they have is each other, which is better than nothing at all. But then again, they're all very sick. So they keep their distance. And when they come to Jesus, he says, go and show yourselves to the priests. So as they're on their way to show themselves to the priests, in keeping with the Levitical code, they notice that their bodies start to heal, and they're made clean. And one comes back singing and dancing, shouting, just like in that urban church, right? Singing and dancing and shouting, and he falls at Jesus' feet, and he's thanking Jesus. Now, I think we do a disservice to the story to judge harshly the other nine who didn't come back. We don't know that they were not grateful. They were actually doing very literally what Jesus told them to do. Go show yourself to the priest. And that's what they were doing. They were going to show themselves to the priest so they could become ritually clean. But this other fellow, who is a foreigner, oh my God, who is a Samaritan, which would be equal today probably like maybe a congressman in the United States, probably. I would imagine that if there were a Gallup poll, they would probably rate a little higher. So there's hope for everyone, right? He comes back, but you say, oh, well, but he's not a part of that tradition. He felt it was okay for him to split. But he had his own religious tradition, didn't he? In Samaria, where God was worshipped on a particular mountain, and they expected everything to happen in there in their region and not so much in the southern region in Judah. So there was every reason in the world for him to go to his own place, but he didn't. He came back to the source of the healing, you see. And that source was God's incredible, perfect love through Jesus. And he recognized that. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. This is huge. Because we can be sick, we can have cancer, we can go through chemotherapy, we can be uh, suffering from Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder after a horrible traumatic experience and with counseling and with kindness and with nurture we can overcome these we can go through surgery and our body eventually heals we can go through a breakup in our lives and our heart is so deeply wounded but eventually that heals as well so healing is something that takes place with our human bodies because we're human but this Samaritan This Samaritan experienced more than just relief from his leprosy. Because of his faith, he was made whole. He was made well. In other words, the grace of God and the purpose of God in our lives is more than just getting us through the difficult times and through disease, but it is to make our whole person, our whole self, body, spirit, and mind mature, healthy, and whole. And because he recognized the source of his healing, he was made to be this way. So here's the good news. You have the power within you to overcome anything in your life that's got you broken and that's got you diseased, that has you depressed, that keeps you up at night worrying. You have the power within you because those things will eventually heal over and be okay. But the other power is this spirit that you have. And this is a spirit that does not allow those diseases in the world in which we live to seize the day and to win the day. Back many years ago, a little girl four years old, a niece of mine, who's now graduating college, I think. Her granddaddy, every evening, 
would get in his little red pickup truck along with whoever wanted to ride in the back, which if you're four years old, there's nothing greater in life than riding in the back of a pickup truck, and go count cows. So on the back of the truck, I'm there, and, and Caitlin is there, and her grandmother was there, and Caitlin's mom was there, and some other members of the family were all riding in the back of the truck while granddaddy counts cows. He stops. He stops 20 feet from a huge bull. You know what I'm talking about? The, the back of the bull is this high, and its legs are about that long, all right? So it's nothing but shoulders and muscle, and the bull is grazing there. And after he stopped the, tr the truck, Caitlin jumped out of the truck, stood right in front of the bull, and said, I'm not afraid of anything, Mommy. I'm not even afraid of this bull. And that bull just kind of looked up and went, and kept eating grass. But she, four-year-old, stared that bull down. Yes, sweetheart, we see how brave you are. Get back in the truck. <laughs> literally, just with one little flick of his head, she could have gone flying. Yes, sweetie, get back in the truck. Okay. And she pops back up in the truck. All right? I tell you that story because we can face the greatest, most powerful, strongest bulls of life if we stare it down with faith, with courage, with strength. When we're not afraid, we can stare down anything. And because of this faith and this healing power of God's love, a broken marriage is not going to keep us down. Chemotherapy and radiation therapy is not going to keep us down. Arthritis and living in constant pain and degenerative bone disease will not keep us down. The loss of a job and health insurance will not keep us down. Foreclosure on our home will not keep us down because we are made of something greater than these things. And when you realize the source and the power of the healing that is there for each and every one of us, then that's when you live with a conscious mind. That's when you're living with a mind that is connected to your soul, which is a facet of the divine himself, and God's self. And it's with that power that not only are we made clean physically, but we're made whole spiritually. Thus ends the lesson. Let us pray.